Hello everyone, welcome back to something a little bit different. Uh, today, I sort of just want to do a very chill commentary and talk about something that's been on my mind. Um, oh, it's a little glitch there that happens in the video. Um, this is a post-commentary, which means this game was played a bit earlier as I recorded it, and I'm just doing a commentary over it. This is sort of an old style of video I used to like watching, um, like Call of Duty videos from people like Hutch and Cnanners way back in the day when that was a thing. No one really does it anymore. Anyway, what I was going to talk about, um, the subject I sort of had in mind was um, a question that I hear every now and then, which is, is Pan if Phantom Forces, is Phantom Forces pay to win? Um, and I get this question from people that don't really play Roblox and or, or maybe are playing Roblox for the first time and are playing Phantom Forces and either they say this game is pay to win or they say do you think it's pay to win because I'm rank 102 or so and you know they want to know my opinion and I, I thought about this quite a bit and honestly I think today my answer would be yes um, Previously, when I first started playing the game, I might have had a different answer because back then things were very different. Um, so I started playing the game when it first came out, even like the the versions um, before it had any maps or anything. So like I played this game since day one, and uh, back when it was just like really early Phantom Forces and there was like 30 guns, um, the highest once they added in ranks to unlock guns, the highest ranked gun was something like 30 or 40, like rank 40. And also back then, there weren't really any super powerhouse guns yet. Um, so Phantom Forces wasn't pay to win at all back then. I mean, every gun was sort of equally crap. Um, and I think sort of the turning point where it didn't necessarily become pay to win, but things definitely changed, was the FAMAS. Uh, the FAMAS was added uh, in an update, and it was the highest ranked gun to unlock, and I think it was like something like rank 57, 58. And at the time that I was playing that, I was like, yeah, I'm never gonna get that high ranked, like, there's no way, that's too much time. Um, meanwhile, now I'm ranked 102. Um, but anyway, this leads me to the developers after that just went nuts and so now we have guns that are rank 100 uh, and higher to unlock and like even I'm a rank 102 and I don't have all the guns unlocked uh, and this doesn't necessarily make it pay to win like at all because you can still unlock these things legitimately through gameplay it is a crap ton of gameplay that a lot of people don't want to do but it's possible I guess um, but, but the thing is, the, some of the guns you're unlocking are also not very good guns, right? Um, but, the, but there are some guns that are actually objectively better than others. Like, I mean, you start out with the MP5K as your PDW weapon. And then at rank 100, you're getting the Chris Vector, which is probably the best... Um, one of the best PDWs in the game. One of the best weapons in the game. Um, and when the FAMAS came out, um, actually, the FAMAS was the best weapon in the game for a long time, up until, like, the recent update, um, up until the summer update, where they nerfed it super hard, uh, it was the best weapon. It was a laser with really high fire rate and just crazy accurate. Uh, so maybe not necessarily pay to win, but, like, these high ranks get these weapons that are so much better. And I mean, I, I've noticed a thing, I've noticed a trend recently that's been pretty good is the developers are definitely doing their best to try to balance these weapons. But I think it's an inherent problem that the weapons are so high rank to unlock. I feel like that's such a bad, bad way to do it. You know, you're, you're giving these high ranks different weapons that regardless of if they're better, people are going to think they're better. And, and weapons like the Chris Vector aren't helping very much because the Chris Vector is one of the most powerful guns and it's a rank 100 unlock. Um, 
But then, aside from guns, not only guns, you also have the ballistics tracker, which nobody is going to get 1,000 kills on a gun to get the ballistics tracker. And I, I personally think the ballistics tracker is sort of a broken attachment that really shouldn't be in the game. Um, for those of you that don't know or don't play Phantom Forces, the ballistics tracker is an attachment that um, it... Anytime you aim down sights, it puts a dot above people's heads in your in your vision, um, and the dot is where you shoot to get a headshot. Uh, which, for like an automatic weapon, isn't a big deal, although you can easily spot where people are using it. But with a sniper rifle, you don't have to compensate for bullet drop anymore. You pretty much just point and click, and it makes things extremely easy. Uh, and then with weapons like the BFG as well, being a very high rank unlock and um, an instant, like, one-shot kill. Everyone sort of knows it's been a, it's been a meme that goes around, but, uh, yeah, everybody calls the BFG Ballistics Tracker pretty much the worst combination in the game. Um, but, like, there's a lot of this going on of, of uh, people calling things overpowered and, and saying that the game is pay-to-win. And I, it definitely, to a degree, is. I, I actually had a point that, that I was talking about earlier that I just completely forgot about, which was the Ballistics Tracker. Um, yeah, it, it is straight up pay-to-win with that. That's not even an argument. Um, the Ballistics Tracker, as an attachment, is overpowered, and it's 1,000 kills to unlock, so anybody with the credits is going to buy it. And if a rank 1 goes ahead and puts a Ballistics Tracker on his gun, on his sniper rifle, I mean, he's going to do far better than someone who's just starting out without a ballistics tracker you know he doesn't even have to try and th there's certain things like that in phantom forces that i really don't like th i mean a lot of people hate the bfg and it's very understandable why because a rank one with a thousand robux can buy a bunch of credits buy a bfg and then all of a sudden without any effort they have a one-shot weapon and it has nothing to do with the privilege of leveling up and unlocking that weapon, but it has everything to do with there exists a weapon in the game that somebody can pick up and just one-shot people with, and I don't think that's okay. It's, I mean, it's the ballistics tracker as well. Somebody can instantly come into the game, and they don't have to try to aim. They don't have to try to find where people are. They just can see, and they just can insta-kill. And it's those certain things that make me believe that Phantom Forces is becoming a pay-to-win game. And it and it's sort of almost too far in the hole at this point, because they can't... Well, they, I guess they could, but there there's so many weapons now that are so high rank unlock that people are very proud of having because they're so high ranked. You know, people didn't rank up to level 150 because... Um, rank 150 is what they always wanted to achieve they ranked up to 150 to get all those guns and then they kept playing the game because they enjoyed it or they just hate themselves i don't know honestly i can't even tell you why i'm rank 102 i just played the game too much but but you can't you can't cater your game towards those high ranks and expect people to join at rank zero and go i'm gonna get to rank 150 one day because honestly people's attention spans they're gonna go they're gonna want to go to rank 50 maybe because that's something attainable that's something you can get to once you start to get like around rank 50 getting to the next rank takes time and it takes a lot of time and peop normal people aren't investing this much time something that something that call of duty I know a lot of people like to talk trash on Call of Duty, but something that Call of Duty does really well is pacing its unlocks. Um, and in Call of Duty, you can pick up the game, play for a few hours, and you'll have every gun unlocked. You know, you can play for six hours, maybe, and have every single gun unlocked. You might not have everything in the game, because you can prestige and move further on and do all that kind of thing. But you have everything, and you don't feel like you're on lower ground. Whereas in Phantom Forces, if you if you hit, don't play the game for months, you'll not have all the guns, and you might feel like you're being, you know, I don't know. You just might feel like it's pay to win. And that's uh, pretty much everything I have to say. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you want more of this video, leave a comment, and thank you for watching.